Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. Today's knot project is an Egyptian ankh made out of paracord. The ankh is basically a cross with a handle and it is featured heavily in Egyptian mythology where it represents life. It is connected to many deities as well as pharaohs. It is in a way a symbol of fertility and it has many other meanings attributed to it as well. I like it because, well, it's a cross with a quite a unique look that you can hang by the loop. As far as supplies go, all you're going to need is two longer pieces of paracord about six and a half feet long. You're going to need two shorter pieces of paracord about two feet long. You're also going to need some scissors and a lighter and finally and highly recommended a lacing needle. With these supplies ready, let's begin. We're going to start by taking our two longer pieces of paracord and folding them in half to find the middle point. So let's say that this is the middle of our two cords. We're going to move up a couple of inches and at this point we're going to start making snake knots. Pick up your left end and make a loop like this. Pick up your right end and go through the loop from the top like this. Then pick up your right end again, go under the left one then over the top and into the loop on the right side. Tighten up the knot firmly. And you have your first snake knot. This one was the hardest to do and the next ones will be much easier. Take your left hand again and again make a loop. Take your right hand, go through the top of your loop, then under your left hand, then with the very end of your cord, go over and through the loop on the right side. Then tighten up. You will want to tighten your knots firmly and you will want to line up as many as needed to make a loop for our cross. In my case I had to do about 19 snake knots to get a full loop going. So continue the same way. Make a loop with the left end, take your right end, go over the top and through the loop, then under your left hand, over the top and into the loop on the right side. Then tighten up. Continue all the way until you have an entire loop and at that point we're going to continue. You will usually want to end up with equally long ends on the bottom side as well as the top side. So if these two ends get too short, just turn around and start making snake knots on this side, exactly the same way. So your four ends should be about the same length. So after making a series of snake knots, in my case 19, 
I'm going to fold them together to form the loop. We're now going to take the four ends and we're going to spread them one to each side. We're now going to tie a crown knot by taking one of the cords and passing it over counterclockwise over the next cord. So like this. Then take the next cord and go counterclockwise over the next cord. So like this. Then the next cord, counterclockwise, like this. And then the last cord goes through the loop of the first cord. Then tighten up. You will want to tighten this knot as closely to the snake knots as possible. So like this. We're going to continue the same way. So spread apart your cords, take one of the ends, pass it over counterclockwise, like this. Then take your next cord, counterclockwise over the next one, then the next one, counterclockwise, and then the last one goes into the loop of the first one. Then again tighten up. Continue the same way. So we spread apart the cords. Take the top one, for example, go counterclockwise over the next one. Then the next one goes over the next one. And that one goes over the next one. And then the last one goes into the loop of the first one. And we have another crown knot. We're going to continue making crown knots until we get the length for our cross that we want. Now, it is important that you do these knots tightly and that you do leave some cord in your ends, maybe a foot, maybe a bit less for the finishing knot. Once you get a sufficient length for your cross, we're going to finish it in one of two ways. The first way I'm going to show you is the easy one which is by using a foot rope knot. The other way is going to be by using more of a Turk's head knot. Whichever you prefer, use that one. For the foot rope knot, make another crown knot. Like this, then tighten it up a bit. Like this. Take one of the ends, go under the next end in the counterclockwise direction, then alongside it, up and through the knot. Like this. Then take your next cord in the counterclockwise direction, go under your next cord, then alongside it, up through the middle of the knot. Then the next cord, again, 
under the next chord in the counterclockwise direction, then alongside it and through the middle. And then the last one under your next chord here and up through the middle of the knot. At this point, all you need to do is tighten up the knot. So start pulling on the ends. So like this. And you have a foot rope knot ending at the bottom. The second way that you can choose to finish this part is a bit more challenging but also more rewarding. Again start with a crown knot. And tighten it up a bit. Take one of the ends, travel counterclockwise under your next cord, then go over the top following your third cord on the inside of the knot. Like this, we basically doubled up the third cord. Then take the next cord, again travel under your next chord here in the counterclockwise direction then double up the third chord here on the inside like this then take your third chord go under your two chords And double up this chord here, the third one. Again on the inside, like this. Then we're going to take one of these two chords. We're going to take the outer one, go under your other chord here. Then, very important, go under here. And double up the last remaining chord. It is very important that you travel under these two chords here to get the perfect look for this knot. Now all we're going to do is take one of the chords, for example this one, follow our chord here at the bottom, and then go up, like this, basically doubling up this bottom section here. Then take your next chord, Again, double up this bottom section, then travel up. Take your next chord, again double up this bottom section, then travel up. And the last chord, again double up the bottom section, then travel up.
With this we have finished our knot and all we need to do is tighten it up. We tighten it up by basically finding where it exits, where each of the cords exits our crown knot at the bottom. So for example this cord here which exits the crown knot and we go through the entire cord and pull out the slack out of the end. We do that with all four of the cords and we're going to tighten up this knot nicely. Now that we have tightened the knot at the bottom, we are pretty much done with the vertical part of the ink. We're now going to pick up two shorter pieces of cord. These are about two feet long. And I'm going to move up about a foot. And I'm going to start by making a loop with the left end. Like this. Then pick up my right end. And fold it up. Under the loop like this. Then with the same right end, go over. Then under the left end. Then over, under, and over. Pick up this top right end, go past this cord here on the left, and through the middle. Pick up your bottom left cord, go past this cord here on the right side, and through the middle. With that, we have tied a lanyard knot. I'm going to retighten it as close to the ends as possible, and then we're going to continue. To retighten the knot as close to the ends as possible, simply pull in one of the ends, like this, and work it out through one of these ends. Then take the other end and again work it in into the knot. Like this. And with that we have placed our lanyard knot as close to the ends as possible. We're now going to line up three snake knots. So the snake knots are done exactly the same way that we did the main part of our ank. So just like these. Pick up your left end, create a loop, go through the loop with your right end, Then behind the left end and over the top into the loop on the right. You will want to tighten your snake knots as close to the lanyard knot as possible. And then simply continue adding two more.
and with three snake knots lined up, we can now use a lacing needle, attach it to one of the ends, and then simply push it through this vertical part where you want to attach your horizontal end. So like this. We want to run through both of the ends and at that point we're going to line up three more snake knots and then a lanyard knot. We continue by lining up three more snake knots and make sure to tighten them as close to this vertical part as possible. Like this. Then finish with a lanyard knot. And now for the lanyard knot, again make a loop with the left end. Place your right end under it. Basically creating a new shape here. Then go over this cord here. Under your left end. Then over, under, over. Like this. Pick up your top right cord, go past this cord on the left, and through the middle. Pick up your bottom left end, go past this cord, and through the middle. Then pull on both of the ends and tighten up the knot. As you can see, it is quite a bit far away from our snake knots. So again, pull in one of the ends. And work out the slack out of the knot. Pick up your other end, this one that has the slack in it, pull it into the knot, By tightening our lanyard knot as close to the snake knots as possible, we have finished our ank. The last step is to simply cut and melt the ends and press them onto the ank.
With that, your Egyptian ankh is complete and you can start your way on becoming a pharaoh. With that said guys, thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope it was fun and useful. Thank you and see you next time.